I was down staying with a woman and she got this email that came in and she said, David, I don't know how to answer this email from, to my friend, would you answer it? And basically the email said, A Course in Miracles is nothing more than a Christian science ripoff. And I just had to have the biggest laugh. Jesus and I had a good laugh at that because first let me put a, give you a more of a historical context about non-dualism. Non-dualistic teachings have been around for a long time, many, many centuries. You can go back to, to India, Veda Vedanta, you can go back into China. You know, A Course in Miracles is a non-dualistic teaching. Science and Health and Mary Baker Eddy's teaching is a non-dualistic teaching. Mary Baker Eddy used Christian terminology because her, she lived back with the transcendentalist and Walt Whitman and Thoreau and all these, you know, you Emerson, you know, great, great thinkers. Talk about new thought and even Quinby who was right before her. So, so you have a, a teacher, we'll say, like Mary Baker Eddy come along and she's going to let fly and let rip with non-dualistic metaphysics. Back in the day, Mark Twain and she was kind of, I mean, she took flack big time. Gary and I think we take shots. Imagine back in, in that century a woman coming out and speaking these things. I'm sure Mary Magdalene took a few shots back in those days too, considering the, the culture. But anyway, here's a non-dualistic teaching and it's coming through in Christian terminology. And that's why I had to laugh when I saw the email. The Course in Miracles is nothing more than a Christian sign ripple. Christian science ripple. It was basically saying that the Course in, Course in Miracles is like plagiarizing and repackaging a bunch of ideas that Mary Baker Eddy originated. And then if you go back to the original Jesus, that's when this whole plagiarism idea gets absolutely silly. Because, you know, the Gnostics, if you go back to some of the Gnostics teachings, they were really great too. And you can go throughout all the centuries. So now let's roll it forward here to this century, you know. This is where it's absolutely uh, funny when when people seem to be circulating things around the internet uh, and talking about Gary plagiarizing some version of the Gospel of Thomas that was on the internet before Gary wrote his book. And I get these questions actually a lot of times where, where people will go on and they'll say, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's plagiarism, that's, that's lying, that's deception, this and this and this. They say, okay, are you guys ready to do a little Course in Miracles now? Let's, let's <laughs> practice a little Course in Miracles here. Now, there seems to be this big flap that I hear about a lot between fact and fiction. I, I remember we, you know, we've mentioned with Marla Morgan's book, Mutant Message Down Under, and Jimmy Twyman's Emissaries of Light. You know, this is not kind of a new controversy or flap. It's almost like a fad. It's like, how many, what's the fad? Oh, we got a fad, just like with wealth, you know. It was fed to be poor, or wealthy, and now here we come around with another fed. And the, the big assumption underneath is all these accusations, which would be good to look at, I think, if we would have a nice conference, we could talk about some of these things openly. But it's like, what about the underlying assumption about what's fact and fiction? You know, what are the teachings of the Course in Miracles? They're teaching what? That this world is fiction. Is that uh, debatable? No, it's not. It's a projection. To try to start to draw lines in between what is all unreal and say, this is factual unreal <laughs> and this is fiction unreal. Doesn't that sound funny? Factual unreal and fiction unreal. That's almost like saying, I got factual error and fiction error. Ooh, that sounds pretty funny too. Uh, when, when there is a defense and an attempt to divide this world up into those two separate camps, the bait's already been bitten. The ego's sitting back snickering at the assumption, kind of laughing, going, gotcha again. Got another controversy to chase down. <laughs> and then, to throw on top of that, to actually throw accusation in, in, in a sense, to trying to belittle, uh, you know, to, to show that there is no value, you know, to even put words in like, uh, 
this is going to hurt a lot of people, and uh, some kind of article that came out recently about oh, how people are going to be so hurt and everything. Wait a minute, people. Let's get back to A Course in Miracles. Where is the practical application of A Course in Miracles when you don't even question the first assumption, and you go out on a witch hunt, or you go out pointing the finger, and none of us are called to do that. We are called to forgive, completely to forgive. And so, these are the kind of things I point out where I just kind of watch this, and here we go, the run-of-the-mill uh, controversy that comes around again and again and again. And, like Gary was saying earlier today, it's just absolutely nothing. It doesn't offer any value, there is no worth to it. People can say, well, this is like part of academic rigor and blah blah blah, you know. Really? Are you happy? with academic rigor, you know, is that going to bring you salvation and happiness? So, I think it's important, you know, that we're talking about these things. Because this is the kind of thing that has to come into the public discussion. Uh, there was a time, actually, when Gary and I came, we were invited together to Canada, and there was a few of us who were invited, and we came together and we, that was where we just had a great connection and we shared. And one thing I will say is the invitation is there. If anybody really seriously wants to talk about these ideas in a very sincere way, the door is open. You know, we are extremely public. We are extremely transparent. We share about our experiences in our life. You know, we just aren't writing to put the Course up on a pedestal, we're talking about from our hearts how we're trying to live this, really, really trying to live this, because it's really important. And so, to me, I think these are like the key things, uh, you know, and I know some people will say, oh, it's like compromise approach, oh, it's a literary device. Literary device? What, what is a literary device? Uh, you know, what does that really mean? Uh, you know, this I love this guy. <laughs> I, I, want to, I, I enjoy talking with people. I get these questions all the time. It's like, literary device. I mean, what? everything is a device that's being used by the Holy Spirit. Why do we have to break the devices up? And we have to have devices and put them in different camps, and which ones are more important, which, and which ones are real, and which ones are fake? You know, I mean, really, let's just practice the Course in Miracles, and, and in that sense you'll feel happy. So, I'm just glad we can come and set the record straight here, you know, put it right out there for everybody, so, so we don't get sidetracked in all these ego controversies and issues that really have no point at all. You can't say that they, they have some value, they absolutely have no value whatsoever. Since the camera is gone, I just wanted to set the record straight about something. Okay? It was that book, it was a mute message down there? Yeah, Marlon Morgan. Yeah, okay, Marlon Morgan. Uh, James Twyman, was it Emissaries of Light? Yeah. Okay. There was a book called A Million Little Pieces. Uh -huh. All of those books were demonstrated, and, and eventually the authors said that they didn't really happen, that, it, that there wasn't their real experience. Uh, when it comes to the disappearance of the universe, I've never said that, because it did happen. That's the difference between the disappearance of the universe and the message down under, and then the series of light, you know, and a million little pieces, you know, those things didn't happen, but my experience of the disappearance of the universe and your mortal reality, they did happen. That's the only difference that I'm pointing out. I'm not making anybody wrong. You know, all those guys have done very well, and I'm you know, sure very successful careers or whatever. Uh, the only thing that I want to point out is that, in my experience, and I don't care if anybody else believes it, I really don't, but I believe it, because that was my experience. 